Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Azeroth Daily for the 3rd of January 2011. My name is Total Biscuit, bringing you your daily dose of WoW news and comment. In the headlines today, the director of Moon, which I personally very much enjoyed, goes by the name of Duncan Jones, is of the belief that Warcraft could be a real turning point when it comes to video game movies. Let's be completely honest here, video game movies have not exactly been up to par lately, although I have to say, and maybe someone's going to disagree with me on this, I thought the Silent Hill movie was a genuinely good movie in its own right, and it was also a fairly faithful adaptation. Maybe you disagree with me, maybe you've got a favourite video game movie, let me know in the comments section below. Whatever the case, it's a good read, this one comes from Badass Digest, which is a reasonably named website in my honest opinion, and it turns out Duncan Jones is quite the gamer, no doubt about that. He goes on to say that he really believes World of Warcraft could be the launch of computer games as good films, and as to what he actually plays, well he plays PS3 and Wii, and he also plays an awful lot of StarCraft 2, Call of Duty Black Ops, and he's looking forward to Diablo 3. Good stuff, you might want to read the full article, and if you do want to do so, it's in the description below this video, as is all pertinent information to this show. A description does exist, I know, it's crazy. The European Community News Roundup has been released, including information from Italian site Battlecraft.it that's wrapping up some lore regarding Sylvanas Windrunner. Also got something from a Turkish site, wow-tr.com, strategy guide for Bastion of Twilight there, and of course Mindflame has been releasing some new videos, including Arthas Rides His Horse Invincible. All this and more available in the Roundup in the description below this video, plus a bunch of weekly comics and the forum watch. But with that, it's time for your Daily Blues. This is a pretty bad post, let's be honest. So bad, in fact, that the OP actually deleted it, but MMO Champion kept a record of it, so sorry, you can't hide your shame that easily. Gristle comes along and claims that the reason that blue posts don't give good responses to anything important is that there are too many useless posts, such as poems, Happy New Year's wishes, and unnecessary threads. Wow, and I thought I was cynical. Apparently this person has a heart of bloody stone. Or well, whatever the case, it doesn't seem to really understand exactly how the blues work, and Rygarius points out that the Blues are actually away for the holidays, so they're not going to be answering things like that. Anyway, I'd like to point out to people that the reason this post is so incredibly silly is that you, you don't assume that the Blues only read three or four posts a day, do you? <laughs> you can't seriously believe this. Of course they read all this stuff about class imbalance and things like that, are they going to respond to it necessarily? No, because they're only going to respond to it when they have pertinent information to give you. They can't just turn around to every balance thread and say, we're aware of this and we're working on something. It would be spam. You wouldn't be able to track anything from the blues. It would be ridiculous. Of course they've seen it. Of course they're looking at it. Because you know what? They're not actually blind. Ah, this is a nice one that almost, almost warmed my cynical black heart. Almost. So I'm scattered. He's a Blood Elf Priest, so, you know, can't necessarily like him for that, but hey, there you go. And somebody called Addiction decided they would say, press the like button if you pictured the OP saying this in a smooth, whisper, radio DJ type voice as you read it. Well, I shall fulfill your wish. This is a poem, ladies and gentlemen. It's called To the Lonely. To the lonely, the lost, the disaffected, the disenfranchised, the bored, the broken, the confused, and the scarred. The darkened, the battered, the bloodied, and the beaten. To those of us looking speculatively at whether the cat would look good in a party hat. Or to we who see no point in the drinkfest parties. To those of us here looking for something, anything to bring a spark of light. For each and all here, instead of there, in the digital life, instead of the real. When you have nobody, no one at all, but those of us here... For all of you, from all of me, Happy New Year. 2011 will be better. It must be. Slash world hug. Yes, and there were a lot of blue responses saying, hey, this was great. But there is actually one I would like to point out here because it's fairly poignant, to be honest. It's from Kristo, who says he finds it very refreshing to see folks from all walks of life share their best wishes for their fellow players. Here we are, shining examples as to why we even have forums and consider it all community. Yeah, I wouldn't exactly consider it a community. I mean, he goes on to say that there's two common bonds, the new year and a passion for World of Warcraft. Again, just liking a game doesn't make you automatically part of a community, and I do feel the community is fragmented at best, assuming it even exists. But hey, you know, the sentiment is appreciated, and it's okay every now and again to highlight something positive in the hope that people might actually take after it. They probably won't, but hey, there you go. And as a nice counterpoint, 
Caliban Zax asks, do you hate your opposing faction? I mean, really, really hate them. And it's followed by a bunch of great insults and retorts. It's quite a good thread. You should probably read it. Description link below. As always, Nathera responds, your mother is a hamster and your father smelt of elderberries. Oh, yes. Now go away, Nathera. I shall taunt you a second time. Fire scandal. Awful. <laughs> it makes me so upset. And with that, it's time for your daily grind. This is a fine example of the Blizzard design philosophy in World of Warcraft Cataclysm, taking the usual boring quest design and spicing it up a little bit. In this case, they feel that the best way to represent the goblin way of life is to blow up monkeys with explosive bananas. Do I disagree with that? No, I pretty much don't. And with that, it's time for your weekly feature. This is Machena Mondays. This little short right here is a parody of Kung Fu Panda, as you might imagine. It's by somebody called Pixelated Pixels, who runs a little machinima group called Pixelated Pictures, which is really hard to say, whatever the case. Uh, this is, it's just a little bit of fun, this, honestly. I, I do like what he did with the background here, particularly. I think that's the thing that stands out the most. It matches up to the trailer very, very well because of the use of Asian-style sort of ink backdrops. The animation quality in places could honestly have used a little bit of work. It is inconsistent. Like, for instance, there's some great stuff in the bar, and then there's some weird stuff that doesn't really make an awful lot of sense and seems very stilted. That, I suppose, is the risk of using model viewer, but I do like the shading. Some might consider there's a little bit too much flare and glow in this, but it is fairly suitable considering the subject matter in question. It's genuinely funny, and it has a seagull in it, so why would I not like it? I'm going to give this a hearty four trolls out of five. You can click the link on the screen right now if you want to have a look at it, or indeed click the description below this video once your episode has well and truly ended for you. And with that, it's time for the mailbox. This one comes in from Andreas, who says, Hi, Total Biscuit. Over the last three or four years, there have been many MMOs released. Take, for example, Lord of the Rings Online and Age of Conan. When these games came out, everyone kept saying, Oh, it's going to be way better than WoW, and WoW will lose all their players to that new game. Yet still, World of Warcraft is the biggest of all MMOs. First of all, what about WoW do you think makes people actually keep playing it instead of just switching to the new and free MMORPGs? And also, can you list your top five reasons to keep playing World of Warcraft? Warcraft? Well, it's kind of a combined question, isn't it? The answer is identical. I don't think there really is a top five reasons to keep playing World of Warcraft, but what I will say about WoW is it's about consistency in delivering a simple to digest and consume product that is, for the most part, of a high level of quality. Like, for instance, there are a lot of different MMOs that beat WoW in many different areas, but there are none, to my knowledge, that beat it in every area. WoW has always been the complete package. It appeals to all kinds of different players, whereas other games don't. For instance, I've always said that Dungeons & Dragons Online does instances way, way better than WoW. I mean, it does. It's, it's absolutely absolutely fantastic. I love the way that DDO does stuff, and its combat system as well. And indeed, I'd say DC Universe Online does the combat system better, but then again, it also comes down to personal preference, doesn't it? I like DC Universe Online's combat system because I prefer the more direct action RPG approach now, as opposed to press hotkey wait for Caspar. But not everybody does, and again, it's only a small part of the whole. For instance, with WoW, you've got dungeon content, consistent amounts of it. You've got endgame content that from the very inception of WoW was in the game and they rapidly realized, hey, this is what we should be putting in to keep people playing. I think WoW actually excels in terms of the end game, even though Wrath wasn't quite as good. The end game content in WoW just blows any other game out of the water when it comes to PvE. I've not seen another game with as good raid content. Sure, there's games with raid content. Some of it's really complex. Some of it even might be good, but not the amount and the consistent qu level of quality. And yes, Blizzard's had plenty of problems, and WoW has had plenty of stumbling blocks, but I don't think any other game has ever delivered such a consistent experience across the board to such a wide demographic of people, and it does have this crazy broad appeal that will continue until somebody manages to beat them at their own game, which I don't think will ever actually happen. I've always said this, and I'll say it again till I'm blue in the face, the only WoW killer there is is World of Warcraft. WoW will kill itself before anything else manages to kill WoW. 
This one comes in from Daniel, who says, Hello, Total Biscuit. I am a Resto Druid, and I've finally overcome the healer changes and gear block, and I can dish out pretty good healing. My question is that when I run heroics, I can sometimes easily notice players who have so-called Wrath Syndrome. Should I be a good healer and heal through those people's mistakes and get the juicy good healing comment I so like, or should I let them die and probably suffer their whining and or vote kick? I want to help these people learn, and I think by letting them die, it's the best way to do so. But when people flame or whine at me, I feel really bad. What should I do? I understand where you're coming from, and I understand that it's often a good way to deal with people and indeed teach them about their failings by letting them fail and not propping them up and not being their crutch. But bear in mind that these kind of people will probably misinterpret what you're doing. Yeah? They will turn around and they will whine at you. There's no question about that. Because they have Wrath Syndrome, they think the only reason they could possibly die is if their healer's AFK, because that's exactly what happened in Wrath. So they're not going to turn around and say, oh, am I doing it wrong now? Or, oh, I, have you run out of mana because I just did a bunch of stupid things and that's how Cataclysm Healing works now? They don't know that. They're ignorant of it. That's why they continue to behave in that manner. It's really difficult to teach people like that, honestly. It really, really is because they're generally so closed off from new ideas. They have this idea about how the game's supposed to work and they will not deviate from that. Personally, I would turn around and just say, hey, look, you're standing in the fire. Quit that. Maybe be forward about it. Don't be afraid of saying, you know, oh, oh don't be timid about it. Oh, excuse me. I, I don't know if you might. Don't do that. You know, yes, it's their fault. I wouldn't let them die because that just holds up the entire group. And that's punishing people who don't deserve to be punished. Like, say, maybe you've got a great tank who deserves to be able to get through the instance smoothly and securely, but it's not going to happen if you let all the DPS die because they are a bunch of incompetent fools. The tank's just going to turn around and say, WTF healer, why aren't you doing your job? It, don't punish innocent people for the acts of a few, but certainly be bold, be upfront about it, and if they can't take it, then tell them where to go. It's as simple as that. Oh, I and mean, how dare you say such mean things? Oh, for God's sake. If you can't take constructive criticism, don't play video games with other people. Go play single player games. Sounds like a plan to me. Okay, before we cap off the show, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for me to announce my postcards from Azeroth theme for this week. I will go through the best entries on Friday and the winner will receive a 60 day WoW time card for their region as always. The theme this week is your WoW nemesis. Now, what could this mean? It could mean anything. Maybe there's just something that constantly eludes you. Maybe something like the time-lost proto-drake. You keep failing to get a hold of it. Maybe there's a boss that you wipe on repeatedly. Maybe it's just something within the game. Maybe it's a city that you keep getting lost in. Just anything that's sort of been the thorn in your side for a while. Take a photo of it. Put a little bit of explanation in it on the Facebook page and go post it over on facebook.com slash cynicalbrit. Got a few days to do that and of course that'll be closed on Friday and I will announce the winners at the end of that one. Okay folks thanks a lot for watching Azeroth Daily as always you have been a fantastic audience feel free to leave your comments in the comment section below and I keep saying this but it, it, you know it is important if you do like the video please click the like button it does actually help way more than you might think. If you don't like the video then don't click the like button it's as simple as that but if you do just remember to click that thumbs up I really do appreciate it. Thanks a lot guys I'll see you next time.